there are three main players. Um, the one is the generator or traders. The distributor provides a network as well as the off-takers uh, who are normally the distributor's customers. Now, I think the important point to note there is that distributors are, are regulated um, because there is need to ensure that uh, the uh, building of this very large infrastructure is well managed and, uh, and, the, and, and efficient as such. So when we look at um, wheeling in general, it's essentially the third party transportation of energy. And uh, wheeling is about the flow of energy. And I'll use my pointer for this particular set, a case from the generators um, through a distributor's network to the off takers. That's what wheeling essentially is. And what transactions are involved uh, uh, with it? The important part is that for generators that do face costs, and those costs are to the distributor for one use of that distributor's network uh, to connect into it uh, because there's a cost associated with maintaining that connection and that flow for the generator. And then obviously, if the generator is involved in sending energy for wheeling to an end customer, meaning that the transaction is being managed by the distributor to identify and recognize uh, and acknowledge the energy that has been sent into its network firstly, and then use that uh, energy to be allocated to end customers that have been nominated by the generator. So that's a service administration that needs to be catered for. So the generator needs to um, uh, uh, consider those payments at a high level. We'll look at a little bit more detail later on. And um, the, the distributor has quite a few uh, responsibilities and is to provide that network access and capacity for the energy to flow. Now in South Africa, distributors are required by law to provide access and it needs to be non-discriminatory. So uh, it, it is a given they'll provide you, but they will need to get paid for providing that network because the distributor is regulating the flow as well as the voltage, and then it's building and maintaining and refurbishing that network so that that energy can actually flow reliably. And it also incurs the cost of uh, the losses. Uh, as we all know, when energy is moving along line, it does have uh, losses, the line losses. So uh, if uh, generator A sends um, 100 kilowatt hours are intended for the, the various customers. The various customers in total not necessarily see the 100 kilowatt hours. They will see uh, give or take, you know, slightly less, maybe 98 or 97, that kind of thing. So um, uh, the general, the distributor is facing those costs. So when the distributor recognizes that energy and um, uh, and facilitates the allocation to the various off takers. Um, the distributor will credit these off-takers uh, of their tariff for the energy portion, um, but also it will be a, a rate at which uh, considers that the distributors incurred the line losses. So what happens on this other end is that the customer uh, who is the off-taker uh, pays the distributor their own tariff um, in total, but it, as part of that transaction management in terms of recognizing that energy, the distributor distributor will subtract from the bill the cost, uh, the, the, the value of that energy sent by the generator at a rate ex, uh, including the cost of those losses. So uh, once that um, uh, is recognized, then the customer will receive on their bill a credit for the wheeled energy. So inherently, they are paying for the line losses. The distributor, uh, that's a relationship the distributor is having with the generator and the off-takers and usually has meters at both ends. There's a relationship where that distributor is not involved in and that relationship is between the off-takers and the generators where they do have the bilateral purchase, power purchase agreement. And uh, the off-takers uh, essentially pays the generator for the wheeled energy. And that credit they receive does help them towards that end. And in most cases, um, the situation is one where uh, it turns out to be much cheaper uh, to have that wheeling agreement. And the importance of all this is that the generator by upfront, before they build the power station, uh, their generating station is able uh, to sign up a contract for willing to end customers to then show the bank and get the financing or the capital, the need to put up the generating plant. 
So that those are the, the key transactions and the issues around. But now when we look into the future, I think it's very important that uh, we uh, we consider that uh, the uh, there are various uh, issues and uh, they're highlighted in blue on the slides. It's the same slide or schematic that we looked at. But I think very importantly is um, there is as more and more variable renewable generations enters the distribution network, so it starts exporting energy into that network, um, the voltage regulation uh, and the management of that network becomes far more complex than it is today. So when you look into the future and you think that maybe 50% of customers will be wheeling, for example, 50% of the consumption will be wheeled, then you have to consider that there might be need for curtailment. Internationally, um, there have been curtailment uh, and has been tracked in places like China, where over a year, 7% of the total wind was curtailed, uh, that was generated. And then in Ontario back in 2017, a quarter um, of the generation uh, was curtailed because of that variability. So because of that, um, the potential um, uh, penalties for off-takers uh, may exist. And then we have increased unpredictability due to, uh, due to climate change. There's also the issue of network capacity because the rate at which new generation is coming on board may not necessarily be mirroring the extension or the growth or expansion of the distribution networks. And then the in the future, if we have all this variability, um, the systems like the national uh, system operator will require to start knowing how much this generator is intending to send the following day so they can schedule and plan to balance the supply and demand in the country. And that may mean that generators will now become parties that are responsible for the focus they provide a day ahead. So those are some of the issues that, um, uh, that, that uh, generators are due to, to face in the coming futures. And for the distributors, obviously we spoke about the curtailment and then um, the fact that there'll there'll be a lot more complex that they currently deal with, which means more cost, and they'll need much more capital um, to be able to manage uh, and, and, and supply reliably uh, by availing their networks. Customers, uh, they are customers and uh, uh, customers are facing the challenge of uh, the decarbonization targets around the world, and they're trying to get as much energy wheeled into their operations. And however, with wheeling, what the consumer can get for credit uh, is limited to their consumption. So if the generator sends 100 kilowatt hours across and the off-taker only consumes 50, uh, uh, currently 50 is forgone. So uh, the generator will only end up uh, um, uh, seeing a credit arriving for the customer for 50 kilowatt hours. So it's important that these generators, when we're uh, considering those type of issues, including their variability, that they have various options in terms of where their energy is going to go uh, in terms of off-takers.